Greetings and welcome to SmartwatchTix.com from the It's About Time department. It's about time Mr. Tick starts reviewing smartwatches again. I know, I know. Blood, blood, blood. You've heard everything there is about blood, blood, blood. Blood pressure, blood oxygen, even, even lung capacity. We've had all kinds of strange and wondrous things here, but they weren't smartwatches, at least not in the classical sense like you're about to see here, and I apologize for that. It's because we haven't had anything yet. These are the new ones coming in. Looks and smells like it could be an Android watch, but you know what? It's not. But we do have two new Android watches coming in. Hope you're still a subscriber. They'll be here soon. I won't talk about blood in this review at all. I promise. I promise. Because I'm going to talk about rugged. This is a ruggedized watch here. This is a bad boy's watch. This has got a double clip that you got to pull out. Look at that thing. It could hook you. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. And it's in the typical lock map red box. We see them all. Look at this beauty. Little cover on it. Let's talk about what's inside of it. Would you believe you could put a SIM card in this, make and receive phone calls? Yep. Would you believe you can put music in this and use it as a music player watch? Yep. Would you believe it's got a little camera on the side too? Yeah. It's starting to smell like an Android watch. Everything except apps. It's from Banggood. Thank you, Banggood. If anybody's going to come through sending us real watches, it's going to be Banggood. It's called the Sky. Lockmat Sky 4G Full Netcom Smartwatch. A 1.28 inch uh, screen uh, display. Not too terribly big, but it's more than made up for in bulk from the ruggedness to give it three ATM waterproof capabilities. In terms of overall specs, here we go. We've got an SOS system in it, SIM card, uh, the Bluetooth music player, and I believe it's Bluetooth, wow, it says 2.1, but I'm pretty sure it's at least 4 point something, maybe even 5. Um, 512 megabytes of storage for music, that's really... No, no, sorry. Four gigabytes. That's much better. Four gigabytes is is really a decent amount when you're just talking about holding music. No apps, no videos, really. Maybe camera. I don't know. Let's see. Um, but anyway, you got four gigabytes. So you should definitely be able to put lots of music on there and stream it to your earbuds. As I understand, you can tether your earbuds to it, take it out uh, hiking, whatever you want to do, even swimming with it with three ATM waterproof. Um, Bluetooth music playback from your phone through the watch, yes. And a tiny little 3 megapixel camera. Not going to do super photography with this one, but just to catch an occasional uh, shot here and there. All these other things are included. Running, swimming, basketball, and more. Date and time, walking movement, and so forth. 240 by 240 pixel. Not the biggest, but then it's a small size screen as well. So it's still going to have some sharpness. Look at this. A 600 milliamp hour battery. About three days of battery life and talk time and everything. About one and a half hour charging uh, with the standard magnetic charger. And there's your size and dimensions and everything. Again, check the show notes for the buying link to pick this up. When look for a coupon discount. I think I might be able to get you a better price than that. If I can, you'll have the coupon in the link. Here we go. Let's dive in. There's the, uh, the watch. Deeper in the box. Wow, it's a separate box within a box. We have all the other goodies in here. I got a really thick manual. We've got the uh, cable, which should be four pin. You know, you'll have two power and two data for transferring music and things to the watch. There's the connection. Wow, it's a pretty heavy watch with all the rugged waterproofing, and it'll hold it with the magnetic charger, so it's got a really good, strong uh, connection to it. Plugs in the USB on the other side. The SIM card goes right in the back. you got to unscrew it and put it in there. Should be AT&T or T-Mobile in the U.S. It's a GSM network. They all are in China. You're not going to get uh, good results with Verizon or... Uh, who's the other guy? Shh. Uh, Sprint, are they still around? Um, but basically, T-Mobile and AT&T, water resistance, sport watch. This is the camo one. Right now, it's out of stock, but um, the other colors are in. I'm sure this will be back in stock. Very, very popular. And inside here, I bet you 
we've got a little screwdriver yeah see it right through there and uh, extra screw maybe for uh, and the, the tool for removing the sim card I'm not going to open the bag but the, the, the goodies are in there that you need to be able to get into the sim compartment okay as traditionally we will charge it up get it all ready turn it on and give it a run through of course I'll show you the manual. I know, there's always one of you. Can we see the manual? Okay, here you go. This is a quick run-through of the English version of the manual. Going to let you freeze-frame the pages if you want to and read it at your leisure. We're going to look at all these screens in a minute when we go through the whole setup process. That's it? We're into Chinese already? Sure enough. Not too many pages in here. Lots of languages, big thick book, uh, but very little information. That's why you gotta watch the review. Are you ready? Let's get rugged. One press on the top, it vibrates, shows you the lock mat logo, and then goes into this. You hear the piano rift in the background? That's their classic lock mat boot up. We've seen that on all their APP, LLP watches. Nice, nice. Now, we're into the first uh, watch face, and it's actually set at a relatively low brightness, and it's almost too bright to be uh, used on screen. Let me tell you first, I've got to unlearn everything I know and expect from a watch. When I swipe down, I get into this first screen. Now, it turns out I've taken the back off, and I've put a nano SIM in there, and uh, T-Mobile, T-Mobile nano SIM. And I've got connectivity, says 2Mobile. It goes back and forth. There's 2G, and then it shows nothing. And then it'll show 4G with some yellow bars. But guess what? I can't make or receive phone calls with it. Sorry, it's the honest truth. I don't know why, but this is what I got. I was going to demo it for you. I can't. I don't know if that's indicative worldwide, if this is China only, if it's just a problem with my own little network right here. All I can do is say... Check it out for yourself if you plan to use this for phone calls. And in addition to phone calls, a long press on the bottom button would initiate an SOS call. So pretty cool if you can get it to work with a SIM and it'll work, you know, on a network anywhere in the world. But apparently it's not working for me right now. When I slide over here, I can put the whole thing in airplane mode, which turns off Bluetooth and cellular. You see that there. Um, I can reacquire it this way. Sometimes you do that on your phone, you know, and you'll get a better connection with the cell. Turns back on Bluetooth. Now, nope, it popped back into 2G. I mean, nobody uses 2G anymore. So not really impressed in an area where I have 5G connectivity from my phone to only be getting 2G and no bars, basically. Okay. We've covered that one. There's a lot of pluses and a whole lot more not minuses. This this fits to a particular market, but not the broad market, in my opinion. I can't slide this way and go anywhere. I can't slide that way and go anywhere. There's only two directions. This way, and if it doesn't go back, you gotta... And this is only on-off. This is the button to go back from where you were. Yeah, yeah, I know. And slide that way, and you get into the apps. Nothing more. Oh, sorry. I, well, that was coming in on the phone. It took... Uh, not, really? Okay. No, it just picked up on the phone. There's contact. So you've you've got a couple of things in there. That's probably from what's on the SIM card. Um, phone contacts and messaging supposedly will work with the SIM installed, but do not tether to your phone. In fact, guys, this does not tether to the phone at all. There's no tethering app. There's no way to transfer data through the app like your step count daily or your swimming results or your running or any of those things. They only live on the watch. There's no associated app for this watch. Like I said, got to kind of unlearn everything. With that said, this is an outdoorsy watch, something you can just kind of use standalone, uh, but not really... Uh, for any kind of phone calling support with your phone. It's totally standalone. If you get it to work, calls, 
Your contacts would be what you have on your SIM, not connected Bluetooth to your phone to get your contacts from there, right? You'd have to put them on the SIM card. And then messaging, of course, would be here as well. We've got camera and gallery. We'll come back to that here. We've got a basic clock, which is for setting your alarms. And then you got the overall settings. Also going to come back to that. Settings and clock, or again, camera, we got to talk about. Pedometers, basic. Here you go. Step count. Steps today, calories burned, yada, yada, yada. But that's it. There's no swiping anywhere except back. Then you got three exercises, running, swimming, and basketball. When you go into running, which I've done before, it immediately starts up. It'll give you your steps and calories. If you come over here, you can stop or pause that. And if you go one more, this is where you get your historical record. And it shows you, I did a 17-minute that's the number of calories. I wish I could burn 138,000 calories in a day. Phew! Mr. Ticks would just light up. And steps, 241. Yeah, that's what I got on that particular run. Now, bear with me. The slide back sometimes works, sometimes doesn't. Usually, you got to use the button. And here's a different one for 16 seconds. You see, if you're sliding over there, it immediately starts. And then you just go to check your results. And you've got another one that you've recorded that has nothing in it. But yeah, you can delete that. Just kind of a bad, strange implementation that you got to go through this process just to get there. Swimming doesn't give you much, just calories versus time. And again, stop and pause. And again, here is some results. 11 minutes, burn 94 calories. And that's all I can see on here. Back, back, back. And then basketball is the only other sport, which I presume is kind of like just a general purpose workout. Again, it's going to give you time versus calories. And that's all. Um, so really not a sophisticated fitness watch so why would you want it let's see you've got a sim card that maybe maybe will not work for phone calls no bluetooth tethering for that no bluetooth tethering for an app there's your sos settings this is where you'd put in your phone number long press on that it would immediately call uh, that phone number if it's working for your um, sim card but if it's not you have, yeah okay last thing music this has four gigabytes of memory, but it's using more than around half of that for, I don't know what, the operating system, which is pretty small. Uh, anyway, you're down to two, two and a half gigabytes, which is still a lot of music. So I got some music in here. I got the volume set all the way up and stop it already. Stop it. Okay, I'm going to play a song. You hear all that? Let's skip forward. Now this is not, this is not music coming from my phone. This is music installed on the watch. It will not play music from your phone because you can't tether it to your phone. There's no supporting app. You can, however, have a, a playlist and you can do favorites, but you can't really sort them or anything. And you can pick up from here. So I just put a bunch of random songs on here. Speakers right there, microphones right somewhere anyway can't play too much of this stuff guys or i'll get a copyright hit you know um but there you go there's a that's one good use for it is you could put streaming audiobooks music or whatever you've got in mp3 format on here and lots of it and you can play it pretty decent volume out of the uh, speaker on this watch okay so we got music now I said I was going to come back to a couple of other things. Remember, that's only on, off, on, off. That's all it'll do. This is how we get back. We're going to get back here. Let's look at the watch faces. Take a break, and then I'm going to switch you over to the other things. You got kind of these analog things with uh, information on it. We're about 54%. I ran it all the way down pretty much shooting a long, long video. Yes, it has kind of continuous uh, video on this. Uh, and they're small files because it's a small 2 megapixel, is it, um, uh, camera. Very, very grainy resolution. Uh, not something comparable to the 13 megapixels we've been looking at from the past. What do you want, that one? Okay, so it's only about four or five watch faces in here. Not a whole lot of them. But when we come over here and we take a look at the 
Oh, look at that. Now it says it's 4G. And I have tried. And it's, can you see? It's got bars and everything. So it's all over the place in terms of picking up the signal. But I cannot place a call. And I've tried to place a call from here just since we're on the topic. Let's come back up here to phone. Let's just put in some digits. Doesn't matter. Let's call. Because the first thing it does is say network not available. Sorry, it's so bright. See that? Yeah, and I can't get past that. So there you go for the phone contacts and all of that. What we were going to talk about camera. So I'm diving in here into camera to show you the camera is over here on the side. Now, my hand is pointing this way and you see the image that way. If you want to um, mess around with it, you can point it up this way, which is typical of uh, to, to get a, a, an image out here. And I'm pretty sure the writing is correct. Are you seeing that? It's readable, right? So we're not getting a reversed image. And if I put it this way, you see that it's going to be aligned east-west, if you want to call it that way. Or if you have your document this way, then it would be properly north-south. So unlike many of the watches, that you shoot out from this direction when you're wearing this one and you want to do a photo you're going to have to turn it up this way i found personally the best way to do that was to have it on the inside of my wrist because i have more discrete control this way and it's easier to flex my wrist back so it doesn't get in the way of the image than it is when i'm this way and i try to twist it this far and i just and i can't twist it very far compared to how far i can under twist my lower arm and i've also got the issue of getting my wrist in the picture from here see it right there yeah not a good placement for the camera but it is there um this looks like camera, but that means switch to camera. It's currently in video. If I touch this, it switched to camera now, and there's a video. If I take a picture of my hand, I can bring that up in gallery. I can bring it up full screen. I can tap it and zoom in and tap it and zoom back. And there you go, my aura ring in gold on this. You see the pixelization. We're not looking at a really sharp camera, guys. This. I'm saying this is probably for a kid around 10 to 15, 8 to 18, I don't know, in that zone. Um, somebody that just wants to play with a watch that has a camera and can play music and is ruggedized. But um, as I mentioned, I'm not going to say that word blood. Oh, I just said it. There's no blood pressure. There's no blood oxygen. There's no blood bleeding out of this thing at all. There's no sensors for any of that. This is not something that you're going to get all of that there's no compass there's no gps it's a basic beginner's kind of a watch that has a nice little camera on it and let me bail out here bail out here get back into the gallery because i shot a few different things here is sitting on my deck it's okay we'll resume from now nah, let's just start over i don't know if you can hear my voice can you I didn't think so. I can barely hear it. That's full volume. I played it on the computer. It's a little bit louder, but it's not really, really loud. Um, this is actually just sitting on a deck. That's kind of the, the view of it here, looking out at a tree. And I just set it there and let it go. Not the easiest thing to do because they're non-removable bands, you see. And they're not really very flexible. So if you want to set this thing up for taking a picture this way, you got to be a little bit creative to get the, uh, the balance right. Otherwise, it'll fall over. But this is an hour and nine minutes worth of uh, uh, video on here. Big battery, 600 and some odd milliamp hour battery. And um, here's a picture of a bonsai little tree. You can zoom in. I don't know how to get the delete. There we go. It just it fades out. Doesn't look the sharpest. It's not really in great focus, but yeah. These are kind of samples of different images. Here's a picture in the yard. Okay, this is a little bit better. You can zoom in and see some of the leaves and things. But it looks fuzzy, and it should, because it's a really tiny, tiny camera. But that's what you got on here. You've got a music player, you've got a camera, and you can hold up to two and a half gigabytes of stuff, including a lot of video. Um, but the audio is kind of lame on it. And the last thing is the settings. In here, 
you can turn Bluetooth on and off. Now, this is interesting. When you have it on, it's uh, called Sky, and it's only visible to paired devices you've already paired to. If you want to pair this to earbuds or a, a Bluetooth speaker, you have to tap that. It'll make it visible for a min two minutes. Then you go and you look for Sky on that device, and you pair it. Or you search for devices and you find them listed in here, all the Bluetooth speakers, and then you pick one and you pair. So you pair one way or the other. Usually it's from the device to the speaker because you don't have a display on the speaker to, to hook back. But this does have the visibility capability that you can turn it on and off to be seen by other devices. And of course you can turn Bluetooth on and off completely right there. You've got your overall display. Here we finally are looking at the brightness and that's all the way down and it gets really really bright so no trouble seeing shooting video outdoors or the time or anything it just will wash out the screen on uh, on our video here so I'm going to bring that way down here sleep you want it always on screen practically you can get it you can go as low as 15 seconds and as high as 30 minutes on this big battery gonna last a long time not days if you have it on with 30 minute uh, timeout but it should last a while uh, if you want to keep the the display on all the time I really don't like the navigation um, volumes you can change your volumes for everything audio ringtones and vibrate again if the sim card is working for calls date yeah you got to actually set your date, set your time, set your AM and PM because it does not sync to Wi-Fi or Bluetooth through your phone. So there's no way to reach the Internet. OK, cool. There you go. Here's a nice smartwatch. You don't have to worry about it being on the Internet. You don't have to worry about Big Brother finding you because they can't. There's no GPS and it's not on the Internet. It's a it's a Casio watch with a color screen. It's not really a smart watch per what we're used to but it does have a uh, music player and um, video and inside you can see uh, it's used two gigabytes of photos and videos with a half a gigabyte surplus for more music or more pictures i can clean photos you ready to wipe everything out i kind of am i'm just gonna pack it back up done all cleared and so that should have wiped out the photos and everything maybe even the music let's check that because that's a good thing to know huh and reboot languages uh, about and factory reset round everything out in settings we come down here to music and oh we still have our music that's nice didn't wipe out the music only wiped out the pictures sounds like it let's come back in here and look at photos in the gallery because it wiped out a bunch of stuff. Yeah, took out the pictures. Now, the good news is with that adapter, with the charger cable, plug into your computer, Mac or PC. Uh, with Mac, you got to run a little program that you have to in any time you plug in something. But it'll show up like a thumb drive. And with that, you can transfer music into the device or you can transfer all of your photos out of the device. That's the only way you can do it because you can't Bluetooth tether it over there. Did we cover everything? I've showed it to you on pretty much, right? We hook that thing in there and it's a, a bear to get it out. This is the camo version of it, which is pretty nice. Uh, it could be a, a fun little watch for folks that want to play, but I'm not going to tell you it's a true smart watch that's going to monitor all of your biometrics and deep understanding of all of your fitness that's something a Fitbit will do. This is not for that. This is for play, camera, music, nice screen, and that's it. All right, gang, you can get this one from Banggood. At $39.99, that might be a good deal. At $59, it's, nine, it's 90 bucks. It's a $90 watch, the Lockmat Sky 4G, if it works, with an SOS button. Gets it more worthy of that price. And that's up to you if it'll work in your area. Um, that's it. Okay, we'll see you again soon. Thanks for watching.